All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for joining my uh, review here of the Arcbird OSD system. Now, I actually received this quite a few months ago, about three months ago, and I've been testing it on and off uh, since I received it. And um, I didn't want to do a review on this until I got it fully tested. And I, I can tell you it is a very powerful tool in your FPV arsenal. It gives you lots of the information that you need to have a successful FPV flight. I have not had any um, glitches in this system whatsoever, and I can highly recommend it. So without further ado, this is the uh, long and uh, very detailed um, review. Thanks for joining my channel. All right, guys, how's it going? This is my review of the ArcBird OSD um, full review. Now, I'm going to go over, uh, some of you guys will know what this is actually already, but for some of you guys be who are beginners, I'm going to go over kind of what the basics of an OSD with a flight controller is. And that's basically exactly what it is. What it is is a link that, or a, it's a interruption between your receiver and your flight controls. Basically, this is the brains of the operation. That's why they call it a flight controller. Flight controller is going to help you pilot the plane uh, when uh, in, in a couple different situations, but where it's more useful is in long range FPV applications. So what's happening is this is standing in between you and your servos and you and your video link. The most important part between the ArcBird and the video link and your receiver is going to be with something that's called an on-screen display. That's why they call it an OSD. And that is going to relay tons of information for you that is going to be displayed on your FPV screen. Um, now this unit is what they call a plug-and-play unit, meaning you don't have to do any special connections to get this up and working with your system. Now that, for me, is something that's very attractive because I'm kind of what I call a set it and forget it kind of a person. In FPV, you do have to be very cautious of things that you have to check along the way. But as far as my flight control system, I like it to be something that um, I can set once and maybe change certain parameters on it and then just really not and not really think about it too much afterwards. I know there's a lot of guys that have um, things that are more complicated, maybe Pixhawk, uh, Vector. There's a couple of different ones on the market that have more functions than, than, than the ArcBird. Uh, but the ArcBird, for me, for my applications, for doing kind of short-range FPV uh, flights, um, it so it fulfills most of my needs what, for what I need. So, um, what does the flight controller do for you? Now, the, so there's two parts to the ArcBird system. Basically, it's a flight controller and an, it's an OSD. Now, what the flight controller is going to do, it's going to has three modes. Okay, well, actually, more than three modes, but the three main modes are. Um, manual mode, which means you get to pilot your airplane as, and this brain here is not going to do change anything that's happening in your flight uh, flight system. Uh, the second uh, flight control system is uh, the gyro mode. Now, what gyro mode is is you still have full control of the airplane and you're flying along, and let's say a breeze uh, or uh, an updraft hits this wing right here and starts to push it up. What the gyro mode in the ArcBird will do is going to counteract that by, by deflecting the ailerons in the opposite direction. So if it feels push up this direction, it's going to oppose it by uh, tilting back the other direction. It gives you a little bit of a, a stability um, and, and it basically it just helps to assist um, the, your flight if you're going, let's say, in a certain direction. You don't want to get knocked off course by a, side uh, a crosswind or an updraft. It will help you with that. Um, the third uh, way that this um, flight control system can help you is what's called stabilized mode. Stabilized mode basically tells, it's like a flight control system on a mini quad, telling it to stay stable and flat. Basically, if you tilt the plane, it's going to oppose that motion and keep it opposed until it's back flat again. Same thing with pitching motion, rolling motion, uh, in all axes, uh, whether you're flying a wing or a traditional uh, style airplane. This is the on-screen display, and this is going to tell me which mode that I'm in. Okay, this is gyro mode. Now, if you got to take a look at the ailerons, now if I take this and I start to move it just slightly this way, ailerons aren't doing anything. Now, if I take it and I say, I'm going to simulate now a very harsh wind that's going to push this, this wing up, you should see an upward deflection of the aileron. And you do. Downward, upward. So, it still allows you full control of the airplane. You can do loops and rolls and tricks, but if you get hit harsh, you see that deflection. Now I'm going to put this into stabilized mode, which means it's going to keep the airplane stable no matter what. Alright, now we are in stabilized mode. Now check this out. 
stays deflected until the airplane is back level again. Pitching up, it gives you down. Down, gives you up. There you go. So, the, um, as far as the Arcbird goes, and I've had a couple of receivers and whatnot that do this kind of action, the Arcbird does a very good job because you actually have a sliding scale on the OSD that tells you how much to, re to um, deflect with. And you can control that through the OSD, which is great. Not during flight, but uh, in between flights. There you go. Very awesome uh, tool. Now there's an addendum to the stabilized mode. You can actually add on a second function, which is called heading hold and altitude hold. Uh, that means it will control your throttle uh, to keep it at a predetermined altitude. Basically, you leave your hands off the sticks at a certain altitude. It'll do whatever it has to to keep it at, at that altitude. And then there's heading hold. Heading hold will actually keep this going. Let's say you're heading northwest, west. If you're heading in that direction and you want it to stay that way, you take your hands off the controls. It will. That's my alarm. It will actually keep your airplane heading in that direction. It'll do everything it can with the ailerons and the elevators to uh, keep your head, your airplane heading in that direction. Okay. Okay, guys. This is the OSD information that is displayed on your. Um, your monitor so I'm just gonna start in the upper left hand corner right here this information here is your GPS location currently of the airplane so if your airplane plane happens to go down and you're recording this uh, video from your monitor you have an exact location to go to which is great uh, flight time right here elapsed flight time um, this is roll and pitch indicator this is where my um, airplane is currently rolling and pitched at so I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit so you can see that how it changes as the airplane changes. This is the altitude right here in feet, and you can change this to imperial as well. You can change it to meters. Same thing with these two numbers. Um, this top number is how many feet you are away from your current uh, home location, and this is the total distance traveled here on the bottom in feet. Okay, uh, battery voltage information is down here on the bottom left-hand corner. These are the current amps that you're currently pulling right now. These are the amps that you have pulled, how many uh, milliamps you've used, and these are, parameters are all changed. Uh, you, you can actually dial them in um, in the OSD. Um, these two numbers are here, voltage of your battery, uh, your flight battery, and also your video battery. Now, I have those both tied into the same battery, so that's why it's reading the same uh, number. This is uh, your speed in miles per hour, and you can also put that to kilometers. So this 94 right here, this is a really interesting number. This is a vibration indicator. So if you've got a prop on your airplane that's really unbalanced, this number will jump down to about 50 or so while you're flying, and it'll change with your your uh, throttle. Now, you want to aim for 65 and above. If you're getting bumped around by the wind, you'll see it shake it around. But if your flight controller is getting uh, vibrated too much by your motor, um, your flight controller might not react in the proper way. So that's why that number is very, very important. Here's my satellite feed right here. I currently am inside and I'm getting six to seven satellites. This is the mode indicator, whether you're in stabilized, which is indicates, or um, gyro mode, or return to home, or manual mode. This is your RSSI signal. That stands for return signal strength indicator, which means this is the signal from your radio. Uh, you have to have a receiver that outputs RSSI, which I do with the Dragon Link system. And 2.8 on this system is the top uh, number. Uh, this is a compass indicator and also a direction home indicator. Along with that, you have an artificial horizon and a radar mark or a radar mark tells you, telling you where you are uh, in relation to home, which is the center uh, symbol right here. So that is basically it. All right, guys, so that's the OSD screen, and we'll move on to something else. So why does somebody need a flight control system uh, with GPS and all these uh, functions on it? Well, the answer to that is is for safety, uh, number one, also controllability, and if you're going to go be going long range, you want to have this information, especially battery, uh, GPS location. If you have a problem on your aircraft um, way out there, you're going to want to be able to recover it afterwards. You, um, so this craft has a return to home function, and basically what that means is it doesn't mean it's going to take your airplane and land it back at your feet. What it does is it um, takes your fail-safe signal, so let's say you turn off your radio or walking along and you drop your radio and it breaks on the ground. This airplane will fly back to you, um, if you as long as you have the 
failsafe set up in your receiver as a receiver function. So uh, if you turn off your, your radio, you lose power, um, you lose your video signal. What happens if you lose your video signal? If you don't have a return to home system, you're basically dead in the water. So let's say your, vi your video transmitter burns out halfway through your flight, and that one's actually getting pretty uh, toasty, so I'm going to turn this one off. So that is the reason why you want to have a, um, a flight control system. Something that is in the worst of situations may help you get your uh, craft back. Now return to home can also uh, be a detriment as well. It doesn't mean you'll never crash another airplane ever again because there happens to be uh, things in the way, hills, um, trees. So what that means is you have to set your return to home altitude at the proper altitude for your location. So each location might be different. If you're flying in a flat flat field, maybe two to three hundred feet might be okay. If you're flying, planning on flying past mountains, you might need to have your return to, to home up to at, at 500 feet. Okay, so um, in my opinion, flying long range air, aircraft without a return to home function or some type of flight control system that can take over control if the worst should happen is pretty irresponsible. Uh, you need to have control of this airplane even if you don't have control of this airplane. You want to have it respond in a way that can bring the airplane at least back to you where you know there's not houses, people, population, or airplanes around. So that's my opinion about the Arkbird. Um, so over the last 25 flights with this airplane and the Arkbird, I have not had one glitch or any abnormality happen in any of my flights. Every single one of my flights was successful. So the FPV camera is powered by your Arcbird as well as your VTX. It gives 12 volts to each, so make sure if you're using a 5 volt camera you have to have some sort of a step down regulator to go into your camera and also your VTX. Now I tend to always use cameras and VTXs that have a wide operating voltage. These operate between 5 and 22 volts, so I have no worries about a 12 volt input burning out my camera. Now, uh, one addition to this airplane is that I'm going to be using an antenna tracker, which is also made by Arkbird. You'll see a following video uh, regarding that. Okay guys, so the Arkbird. My final thoughts on it is it is a very good flight controller and a great OSD. I love the big numbers and everything. So if you guys are looking for a plug-and-play flight control system, I highly recommend the Arkbird.